And we only have one segment with him today, which is kind of bad because we have our uh, Give Local York segment. But uh, Congressman Scott Perry, we're spoiled. We used, we're used to having two segments. We only have one today, so we're going to try to cram a lot into that. Good morning, Congressman. How are you? Uh, I'm great. Uh, happy Easter, and Gary, and to you, happy birthday. It's a little belated, but uh, on the yeah. air here, happy birthday to you. Oh, well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm trying to forget it, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, as you get older, you're just, it's just another day, you know, it's, it's another day. I but, know, but, you know, you, you, you take them for granted, <laughs> and, you know, at some point you run out of them. So well, you, that's you know, it, yeah. I, I, I've i stopped saying, uh, well, maybe next year. I, you know, I, I, now, I, now I look at it and say, well, I think I maybe better do that. So, I, you know, it's kind of yeah, the way we look yeah. at things. Anyway, I wanted to get into a number of things this morning. We just have one segment sure. with you today. We're doing some special stuff. But uh, the shooting at the Capitol on Friday, man, I, yeah. you know, Capitol's become an interesting place. Uh, they were just talking about maybe taking down some of the National Guard and stuff, and now there's some question of, as to whether or not they'll do that because of the shooting on Friday. What, what's your take on all that? Well, I would contend that um, that the barriers that they put up have forced the police. You know, the police are generally outside the barriers now, uh, you know, checking you as you come in. I, I mean, I think it, it literally put the police in jeopardy because of the barriers. And, of course, now huh. – one has died. I can tell you, Gary, I, I was spitting nails over this thing, and I still am. I'm so angry over it because, you know, it didn't fit their narrative, and now they, you know, they're they're shifting the uh, shifting the conversation uh, to the barriers or or no conversation at all because it doesn't fit the the agenda. And and this police officer lost his life, and you know because it doesn't have anything to do with the former president. Well, now it just I guess it just doesn't matter. And, you know, we're going to move on to whatever else the, the mainstream media wants to talk about. It, 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 and it, it, to me, it's, it's horrifically disrespectful and dishonest. I mean, how much there how were, much do we there were 30 shootings in Chicago this weekend, Gary. Yeah. 30 yeah. of them. And no one talked, you know, there were over 600 deaths or two shootings since January 1st in Chicago. And it's the beginning of, of April. Well, and look at the local shootings just here in New York. I mean, we had a 16-year-old right. shot the other week. I mean, I, it, it goes on and on and on. So, uh, here's a question, I guess: uh, Are we are we a safer are we a safer society? You know, obviously, gun control is one of the big talks you're having in, in Congress as well. Are we a safer society when people carry guns? Would that would that have stopped some of this, or are we are we a better society if we leave them at home? I mean, do you need your guns in the public square now? We just saw the Supreme Court rule. Uh, on that, or the Ninth Circuit Court, excuse me, rule on that in Hawaii, they said you don't need to bring your guns to the public square. And some people are saying, yeah, maybe you do because, you know, the public square has become a pretty dangerous place, right? Yeah, it has. And obviously, you know, the firearm wasn't going to save this police officer. He got run over right. by a vehicle, as, as I understand it, right? So, so, and, and he did have his firearm with me, I'm assuming, as a police right. officer I'm familiar with around the Capitol. So I, I think it's actually two different conversations, quite honestly. I think it is. A mental health issue in society. I think this individual on Good Friday had mental health issues. The one in Florida Good. recently had mental health issues. The one in Colorado had mental health issues. We're, we're not dealing with that literally at all, and we're using right. these uh, horrific instances to assail people's rights that are provided in the Constitution, and we're conflating the two of them like they're the same thing, and they are not the same thing, in my opinion. No, absolutely correct on it, and I think that. Uh... You know, one of the things that we have to figure out is how we as a society get out in front of these things and be preventative or proactive and not take away the rights of people. Or in some cases, maybe we maybe we do have to suspend the rights of people who are going to be a danger to others in society. And that becomes a really slippery slope. Hey, speaking of slippery slopes, I wanted to ask you about the border situation and what you're seeing there right sure. now uh, and, and how the the Biden approach to it is uh, either more effective or less effective than the Trump approach. The Trump approach seemed to be uh, kind of getting right at it, but uh, the Biden approach seems to have created some problems. Yeah, obvious to me, this is really obvious. I mean, uh, the Biden approach to it is is that the border is open. That's their approach, and then to feign that they don't understand why people are flooding the border, even when he used that own his, that that rhetoric, that very terminology in the campaign. I uh, don't understand why people are flooding the border. They are overwhelmed at the border, and we are letting not only – I mean, you see the pictures. I mean, uh, you have to watch the correct media outlets, which, again, is unfortunate, uh, of these, these cartels dropping uh, children over, you know, over this 14-foot-high wall, these toddlers. And it is, it's an abomination that you would send your child – 
you know, to walk thousands of miles through the dangerous trek up through Central uh, America and Mexico to, to deal with cartels and, uh, and, 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 and the organized crime that exists there, the narco state that, that, that exists there, uh, hoping to get a better life. We understand that they want a better life. We've got a process for that. But having the, an open border, quite honestly, is not good for the vast majority of them. And it's not obviously it's not good for America. I, I can't tell you how many calls I got during the Trump administration about the kids in cages narrative. And now, all of a sudden, none of those people are calling my office to complain about what they see if they're watching, even if they're if they're even aware of it. What's happening in these uh, in in these reception stations, if you want to call them that? I mean, if you did that, if you did that as a as a landlord or as a uh, an operator of a daycare facility or school or something like that, where you had these people crammed in there, especially during a pandemic, you'd be you'd in be prison. A, you'd literally be arrested. Yeah, I you mean, would be. You know, you got. You, you, you got uh, you got parents, you know, take, disguising their children. I guess in some cases, and, and it's a hyperbole, obviously, but as as immigrants or migrants to try and get them into school. The, the teachers' union in some of these um, some of these states refuse to teach uh, the the kids that are you know that are Americans. Yet they're they're willing to go and teach the uh, these migrants. And, and look. We we owe them an education once they get here. We've said that we're going to do that, but uh, I, th- I think it's the height of arrogance and uh, just slam it in your face when you can't. You're paying the taxes. You can't get your own children in school. Yet people that are here illegally get the the first crack at it. Not to mention, you know, you're dealing with the pandemic and all the requirements that you have regarding the pandemic. Yet these people that are coming illegally just get sent into the country, into the interior of the country, with a lack of testing, a lack of, of the process that is yeah. needed for uh, t- hardworking, tax-paying Americans. It is a slap in the face. I think it's just a complete failure, and I don't know how you can, uh, you know, people can justify the actions of the Biden administration regarding our border. Well, and it, it, it's hypocritical. I mean, it, frankly, you know, to say, well, come here, yeah, it's you, whether it's a dog whistle or not. But and then you, and then you get people here and then you say, oh, well, don't come yet. We're not ready. And then he puts uh, uh, Vice President Harris in charge of that, who's been missing in action so far. Uh, and, and she says, well, I'm going to go down to Central America and see what the root cause is, which which I laud her for. But. <laughs> By the same token, that's not helping the here and now, which is the, the right at the border. That's not the, the root cause. That's the end product. And, and I think you have to be able to do something now to say, we're going to have some water. I saw Joe Manchin, I guess it was, over the week or over the last end of the last week saying, hey, you know, we need to take a little moratorium here and, and come up with what we're going to do because this is a mess. And, and I think everybody, if they're really honest, Democrats and Republicans alike, need to sit down and say, this, this is a human disaster going on, and we need to do something about it to protect our country and also to protect these people. Uh, final thoughts on your part. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, going to Central America to determine the root cause, uh, i, I got to tell you, Gary, I, I don't know how many different metaphors I could use for that, but I think it's pretty obvious what the root cause is. And we're also seeing, obviously, a huge difference in policy that has a huge uh, manifestation, a difference in manifestation of what happens at the border between the Trump administration and the Biden administration. Yeah. And quite honestly, you know, it would have been very simple to keep the remain in Mexico policy of the Trump administration and a couple other things in place. But those were the first things that uh, President Biden uh, undid. And, and they're acting like they don't have any reason, right. uh, any knowledge of the reason of the results. Uh, that are occurring now. It's pretty obvious to anybody that's willing to be honest with themselves and and is knowledgeable at all yeah. the situation, and and they're just refusing to do it. Obviously, There's well, and I think too agenda here. When you go to the idea we're going to wipe out all things Trump, and then you wipe out some of the things in the policy that were really you know working, uh, y- y- you may rue the day where you you know cut your nose off to spite your face or whatever that is. So. Uh, Congressman, appreciate you being with us this morning. Thank you for taking the time, and we look forward to catching up with you again soon here. And take care in the meantime. And, again, belated happy Easter to you, my friend. Yeah, thank you, Gary. Have a great day. God bless. Thank you. Congressman Scott Perry here on WSB Morning News with Gary Sutton.